Welcome back, everybody. Thursday, October 17th. John Ervos is here with Cliff Schechter. Cliff, we are uh, trying something different today. We are. I Apparently, I turned the silent mode off on my phone instead of on. Uh, things you learn while you're trying to make a screen work on your computer so that we can talk to each other and have video. Indeed. So, yeah, we thought we would try to do some more, more video episodes that I'll take the sound out anyway and and put sound up. Well, we're going to figure out how we're going to do it. We love you guys enough to shower and put on human clothes. For Honest you. to God. <clears throat> I had to, although I guess working at home, it still doesn't sound good to other people. Cause I was going to say, I showered at 10 30 in the morning for you people when everybody else should probably shower <laughs> at 6 a.m. to go to work. <laughs> okay. See, I, my kids keep <laughs> me honest. I showered at about seven 30 or so because I have to take them to school. So oh, the kids put on, you're in the Midwest. Put on some oh, sweat. I do that. I do that sometimes, but I had a meeting right afterwards this morning. So a work meeting. So there was no choice. Okay. So anyway, um, today is a, l a lot of impeachment news again. I mean, um, you know, Cliff, maybe, uh, you know what, let's, let's leave to the end the, I'm writing a little note here, the discussion of Elijah Cummings, just because uh, I thought it would be interesting, Cliff, especially as our resident congressional historian, uh, just talk a little bit about him, but I'd like to leave that maybe to the end. Um, yeah, let's jump. Let's jump in with some of the latest. I'm trying to think what, you know, we've got a lot of things that have happened. Uh, Trump's letter to Erdogan, uh, bombing the bases in Syria, military people Dear are speaking Dad. out. And the Pelosi, the Pelosi meeting, which one should we start with? So much. Pelosi? So much let's do Pelosi. Yeah, let's start with that Pelosi a, because it's so much fun. Yep. Yeah. So Pelosi, Schumer, I saw Steny Hoyer. I also saw, I'm forgetting his name. He must be a committee chair. Uh, God, what's his name? I think he's got, does he have like a mustache, dark hair? Glasses. Because I, I just he remember was sitting seeing in the way straight. back of the in the in the infamous Pelosi photo. He's way in the back on the left. Uh, I must have missed him. I okay. I just was so sort of focused on another iconic photo of Nancy Pelosi looking like a boss and Donald Trump looking like the little you know scared yeah. boy that he is. Well, and just uh, in case folks didn't see it, so Pelosi and Schumer and company with the Republicans go over to meet with Trump to talk about. I believe, I don't know what they were talking about. Was it Syria? I don't actually know what they were talking about. I think it was Syria. Uh, they did. I don't know whether that was the goal, is my point. Right. Well, no, I think that w that was one of the goals, but I think that there were a few things that they were talking about, and that was one of them. Okay. And Pelosi really lit into Trump on Syria. Among other things she did, apparently, I read was, okay, the House had just voted yesterday overwhelmingly to disapprove of Trump's actions in Syria, his actions vis-a-vis -vis the Kurds. Uh, I don't think the resolution has any uh, legal oomph to right. it, but it was around 350 votes to 50 or 60. 60, so I believe, yeah. That means, what, 110 Republicans or more joined on? A lot. I mean, so let me give you an example here. Um, there are 16 Republican House seats in Ohio. You know, key swing state, leaning, and even a lean Republican swing state these days. Right. Uh, 13 of the 16 here voted to condemn what he did. Right. Um, only one, and one voted present. He only had two. I'm sure it'll shock you that Jim Jordan was one of them, yeah. who, of course, voted in Trump's favor. But I mean, I mean, that should tell you, in, in a sort of lean Republican swing state, a state that Trump has to have right. to, win, to have a chance. The Democrats don't have to win Ohio. Trump does right. to win to the presidency. 13 of 16 Republicans, uh, 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 my math is wrong because there's 12 Republicans, sorry, there are four Democrats, but uh, nine of 12, three quarters of the Republicans right. voted to condemn his action and only two voted to, de to defend him. And Pelosi, Pelosi, I read, also pointed out that among the Republicans who voted with her and against Trump were three sitting in the room, including Scalise, Steve Scalise, Liz oh God, Cheney, Liz Cheney, and I think Mark Meadows, but I'm not sure. But it was another one where it was like huge conservative who voted against Trump. And, and he's such a child yeah. and he's so insecure that yeah. it's so easy to play him because nobody can disagree with Dear Leader on anything, the slightest yeah. thing. Or you, you know, so the fact that he had a couple people that are supposed to be his allies in the room there that voted to rebuke him, she knew that's yeah. where she's incredibly smart. Yeah. And Bring she got on and, and watched the fireworks yeah. fly. He got pissed. He had a temper tantrum. The Democrats left. Um, Trump tried to claim afterwards, uh, actually he claimed like six hours later, she said he had a temper tantrum. He was melting down. She was worried about his, you know, his psych psyche or whatever. So Trump, of course, six hours later puts out a tweet. I'm worried about what's going on upstairs with her. She had a meltdown. He literally, he literally did the, I know you are, but what am I kid response? Like repeating everything she said. But what's better is Trump then releases a photo 
that I think you guys have all seen now, a photo of everyone around the room seated. He's looking at Nancy kind of mouth open and she's standing up and doing the like school mom right. scold or mom, even better, mom scold. Cause that's yeah. what I was thinking. I was thinking mom, mom scold. Trump releases the photo and I'll starts quickly, tweeting. Also, it. Yeah. most of the collection of old guys and they're all old yep. white guys on Trump's side are looking down. They're all they're like, looking, they're, like they can't even look up at looking. Nancy Pelosi because yeah. they're either scared of her or they're not scared of her, but no, they can't defend Trump's actions or yeah. likely both. Including the military guys, because to yes, right, and I should know, it might have been chairman of the Joint Chiefs, I'm not sure, because Esp Esper, excuse me, the defense secretary was Trump's left, to Trump's right was a full-dressed military guy, which I'm going to guess is the chairman. Um, and he's the one where his hands are clasped, and he's just looking down, and the two guys next to him are doing the same thing. Basically, it is a another iconic Pelosi photo, and the fact that Trump released this thinking it helped him was it's insane. It's hilarious. He's like... And he tried to, he's like, oh, Nancy's melting down. And everybody just sort of laughed. I mean, you yeah. know, there are some things he can try to sort of both sides and, and blur the distinctions. That's one thing, yeah. you know, that he's made quite clear. There's only one person who melts down constantly about everything, whether it's on Twitter and yeah. speeches, and it's him, you know. And so this is the third that I count. There's yeah. the walking out, looking like uh, the oh, young woman they, walking out yes. of um, Mad Men when she quits That's her job. Like the actor like, Pelosi. That's that's right. The sun sunglasses. <laughs> then there's the fuck you clap. Well, she's like, you know, where he. Oh, she had lips. Didn't she kind of do a? Yeah. Well, she did this. Yeah. Like somebody <laughs> nicknamed it. Some comedian. I can't remember who Nick called it. The fuck you clap. Yeah. Which I yeah. thought was just brilliant. And so this is the third <laughs> in your collection of iconic yeah. Pelosi making Trump look like the small person he is. And he thought tweeting it out and trying to uh, yeah. turn it around on her like she was unhinged. In just, I mean, again, it just shows how far from reality Trump yeah. is. I mean, the, the, you don't have to be a genius with imagery to take a look at that photo, see the way he looks, the way she looks, and the way all the white guys on his side are looking down. Yeah. Yeah. And that's not a good photo for him, but he's you know him. What, you know what's funny, actually? That, if you don't mind me segueing to the Erdogan letter, that's a really interesting segue because yeah. Trump, I've got it on my screen, so I'm looking over. Trump writes a letter to the Turkish president, Erdogan, uh, October 9th, right? So today is, what, the 17th? So a week ago. He writes it to him right when everyone's freaking out because he just gave the green light to the Turks basically to invade, go after the Kurds. Everyone's freaking out. Trump writes the letter, but we're going to get to the substance of the letter in a second, which you're all going to agree with us. They're nuts to have released this letter. The letter gets published as a scoop by a Fox News business reporter, Trish Reagan. I went through her her thread. Her thread is total, you know, to Donald right. Trump, right? Oh, so yes. she must have thought she was helping him publishing this. And it means to me well, that somebody... Means she, they, yeah. they, 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 they gave it to her. That's my, they that's my it point. To her. They, 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 yes. they leaked it to her. And, and, you know, whether she thought it was a good idea for them or not, She's just kissing their asses. The key is they yeah. thought it was a good they idea. They thought it was a good idea. Exactly. And she obliged yeah. and put out, I mean, it honestly, it was like a dear Santa Claus letter one of my kids would write. Like, Santa, can you please bring, make a good deal for me and, yeah. and bring me the extra large figure of Captain America? I mean, John, John should just read it to you if you Let haven't seen it. it. Because <clears throat> it, it, it's encapsulated in there is yeah. everything, this man's intelligence, ignorant, lack of intelligence, ignorance, just, it's... I don't know how to, I don't I'm, I'm at a loss for words. Oh, and describe. everybody and everybody sharing it yesterday. Nobody believed it was real, but I mean, <clears throat> excuse me, quite literally, all the journalists, all the political people were sharing it, going, "This, this can't be real." Can't be real. And I thought maybe she was doing a prank, and that's when I went. That's why I went through her feed because I thought, okay, is this for real? And all her stuff was Trump, Trump, Trump. And I was like, okay, this has got to be anyway. It, the White House so confirmed. A historian, I can look up in my Twitter feed. There's a historian uh, uh, on these matters, as there are historians and everything. I think it's on sort of, um, what is the word I'm looking for? Correspondence between Congress and the president or whatever. I can look in my feed and I'll find it. And he said, um, I've never seen a letter of, the, you know, of this nature. Right. Uh, not just between them, but between just correspondence from presidents, from Congress. He's right. like, I've never seen something on this low a level. So, I mean, he's like, I didn't believe this was real. Other than Maryland and JFK, but we haven't seen those correspondences. But that's what it... No, oh, but I'm, I'm only half Whatever joking. those correspondences are, you know that the level of English is so far above and beyond. <laughs> it, it, even if it's all about sex, it's, it's in terms that Donald Trump could never think of right. to write. So, okay, here we go. Dear Mr. President, let's work out a good deal! Exclamation point. Okay, Yay. now mind you, 
that that's the first sentence okay which right there i mean it's perky let's work out a good deal exclamation point lots of letters start that way and by that i mean none by it's, adults it's it's childish it's immature it it whatever it's disrespectful as well i would say by the way as well it right is. i mean you're writing to a foreign yes. head of state that is that is from a country that's you know well, actually well, whatever country, country it's from if you're trying to show i mean whatever my thoughts of yeah. erdogan and they're not good if you're trying to show reverence towards a foreign leader, the kind of reverence you tend to show in a letter, the respect, I guess, is the better word. Yeah. You don't do that. Yeah. So then right. his next sentence, you don't want to be responsible for slaughtering thousands of people, and I don't want to be responsible for destroying the Turkish economy, and I will. Wow. I mean, you know, no, okay, there's one thing. It's good to be direct, especially for somebody like Trump, who is so vacillating and unclear with his language. So there's something to be said for Trump actually said outright, I will kill you. So, I mean, right? There's, at least he didn't leave ambiguity. Although he, although he kind of did because he hasn't done anything about it yet. Um, but anyway, so- Well, and there's always ambiguity because again, when you don't live up to any time what you say you will do, yeah, that's going to leave ambiguity for people, yeah. right? I mean- So uh, I've already given you a little sample with respect to Pastor Brunson. Now, did Trump put sanctions or something trying to get that that pastor freed from Turkey? Yeah, I didn't even know what that part was about. I think that's the pastor he got freed, but I don't know if he had sanctions. The next sentence of the next paragraph had me curious. I have worked hard to solve some of your problems. Yeah. Now, hmm. what people were pointing to was story recently that Trump had bar and somebody else, probably Giuliani, but I don't know, Trump and some a bar and somebody else work to stop the Justice Department, or, or I think Justice, one of the agencies, from putting sanctions on a Turkish bank. And That's one airline. story. Another one is apparently Giuliani was trying to help out, and I don't know if he'd gotten as far along as Flynn had gotten into illegal oh. territory, to oh. extract that, that Turkish cleric. dissident yeah. cleric that's here. Yes, apparently Giuliani took over when, where, from where Flynn left off. Okay, see, I was just going to say, it almost sounded too nice to have it be, I got rid of your bank sanctions. I would, my, mind, my mind immediately went to something more nefarious. Yeah. Well, he so, also said problems. It's plural. And with yeah. Trump, it's often numerous things he's yep. doing to kiss any person's ass to try to make some deal yep. happen. So it could be. So what did he, what did, what did or Trump do? any other do? things we don't know right. about yet. So next sentence, don't let the world down. You can make a great deal. <laughs> General Muslum, and I'm going to suspect General Muslum is with the Kurds, but I'm not sure. Um, General Muslum is willing to, maybe you can Google that, Kurt, uh, Kurt, uh, Cliff, M-A-Z-L-O-U-M, um, okay, is, right is willing to negotiate with you, and he is willing to make concessions that they would never have made in the past. Okay. I think he is the Kurdish, uh, yeah, of the Kurdish, um, yeah, he's the SDF commander. Oh, okay, there you go. The Syri was it Syrian That's defense? The Syrian Kurds. I, I, but, yeah. but they're actually Syrian Kurds, exactly. The There's Syrian the Kurdish military, I don't know what the F in there, it's probably from the different language. The point Syrian is, defense it's, forces, believe it or not, except that, oh, it, that could be it. Think it's, it makes you think it's the Syrian government, but it's not. It's the good guys. Yeah. Um, so that, that they would never, oh yeah, so he's willing to, to make concessions he would never have made in the past. Of course, this is Trump. That's bullshit. Um, I am confidentially enclosing a copy of his letter to me just received. Now, that's interesting, too, because you wonder, did the Kurd even know he was going to give his letter? Probably not. Um, here's the last paragraph, and this is the really crazy one. History will look upon you favorably if you get this done the right and humane way. It will look upon you forever as, as the devil if good things don't happen. Okay as the devil, like, okay, whatever. Um, don't be a tough guy. Don't be a fool, exclamation point. Now, this sounds like a... Don't be a tough guy. I was thinking torn between two lovers, feeling like a fool. It sounds like a song. Or, don't be a tough guy. Don't be a fool. You know what I mean? Doesn't it have like a... It does have a nice ring to it. Like he got I it can almost imagine him doing like a, a West Side Story. Don't be a tough guy. Don't be a fool. Yeah, exactly. Um, I will, and the next paragraph, uh, I will call you later. And Sorry, the, next, the next paragraph is one sentence. I will call you later. It's just, I mean. it's it, it, Honestly, I would go to the point of calling it horrific because that's how embarrassed I am by it. I mean, it makes me actually kind of like I get secondhand embarrassment reading it. Right. Well, the thing is, it's, you know, it's funny. I was talking to a friend about this last night who's on our side, but she was saying, 
at least it shows he was consistent that he actually did write a letter to the guy that said, now, mind you, this is Trump. Trump could have talked to Erdogan by phone and said, hey, go and kill the motherfuckers, but I'm going to send you a letter. And by the way, you'll know, because at the end of the letter, I'm going to say something really crazy. That's your sign that I'm still on board, <laughs> right? Oh, and the letter's going to be harsh because I got I to gotta give it to my crazy public and the crazy Congress to make it look like, oh, I'm mad at you now. Right. And, and by the way, um, reports, and this is from BBC, are that when Erdogan received Trump's letter, he threw it in the garbage. Did they say that? That's what the BBC is reporting. Mm -hmm. So, like, further disrespect, kick in the crotch. Um, and there's something else related to that. I don't know if you mm -hmm. saw this, John. Mm -hmm. um, so so um, let's start with that. He gets the letter. He throws it in, in uh, the trash. Mike Pence goes over there to visit to smooth things over. There's a picture of Erdogan and Pence. Protocol dictates that when an American leader or any leader of a foreign country is meeting with their leader, there should be a Turkish oh, flag behind yes. their leader. Yes. And the American flag should be behind ours. Instead, there was a Turkish flag. I'm not, again, I don't make a huge deal of, the, of these kinds of things normally, except for when I think there's greater symbolism to it. Now, when, when the Russians were there, Putin. a Russian flag was put behind them. Bingo. So we and have a NATO yeah. ally now who who again all of this from the slaughter of kurds and i don't know how bad it is yet i don't you know but certainly some have been slaughtered have been murdered to the release of isis prisoners they were watching to trump doing this and something else we're going to talk about in a little bit which is the bombing mm -hmm. of our own bases which yeah. is just in, i mean but all of this was set in motion because trump is a fucking moron i'm sorry there's no other way to say it thinks he knows things he doesn't know doesn't listen to anybody probably has some corrupt deal about the you know, Trump Tower, Istanbul, or God knows what else. Maybe they have compromise on him. Maybe they caught him or, or Kushner or, or both of them communicating with MBS, you know, saying it was okay to murder Khashoggi, for right. all we know. And, and the Turks, they said they had audio of what went down there. Who knows what they've got? I mean, and it could be other things we don't know. But the point right. is, is the disrespect of all of this, that, that he chucks his letter, this, his little baby written letter in the garbage, and Pence sits down there after the Russians visited and they put a Russian flag behind him and they will not even yeah. put an American flag. And yeah. Mike Pence agrees to take that picture. Yeah. Well, and by the way, some uh, somebody in the Turkish press tweeted the photo and said, well, I spoke to Erdogan's staff who said that that the only re it was not a slight. The only reason it was done was that Mike Pence is the vice president. And only when equal heads of state are there, do we put the flags? Well, guess what happened? Chancellor Merkel, Angela Merkel went. They didn't do it. Then then some Erdogan defender said, ah, oh, but Merkel is the ch uh, chancellor. She's not the president of Germany. Now, mind you, it also depends. Uh, countries are set up differently. Of the course. chancellor, like, the chancellor is like, the leader of is the foreign policy leader of Germany. So, right. so actually, she is the one you would put the flag. But then the president of Germany went, and they still had the Turkish flag behind him. So right. even the apologists for Erdogan were wrong. Uh, he it's, does it's this all. to people. He it's it's a power play, just like Putin did with the dog. When you when send whoever is yeah. there for you is the top representative of your country. Yeah. Chances are, there are exceptions to this, yeah. but chances are it will be the president, the vice yeah. president, or the secretary of state. And whoever it is, our flag is supposed to be flying behind them. Yeah. They are our top representative there. Can uh, let's, I, I want to take this in a direction, because you got me sort of thinking of this, an interesting little anecdote, but it's something worth, because it also brings in your and my foreign policy background that I think is interesting, worth discussing. Yep. Um, so... Oh, here's one other thing. Yeah, I don't, yeah, yeah. I, I don't on. want you to lose that thought, but I feel like this okay. is but, this is related to the same thing and incredibly important. If mm -hmm. I'm, I'm quoting uh, former governor, former DNC chair Howard Dean here, who is further quoting from this BBC report. So if 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 Dean oh, the throw is, the letter report, yes, if Dean yeah. is characterizing the report correctly, the, uh, the on the throw the letter away report, he said he, from what he's saying here, BBC is reporting that Erdogan made his final decision to invade Syrian Kurd territory as a result of Trump's letter. There, oh, there you go. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Now, mind you, he was Erdogan enraged by the letter. Yeah. He threw it in the garbage and ordered it. And again, yeah. this is what, when we go back to foreign policy stuff that you and I have experienced, and we both have degrees yeah. in it, we both worked. I did some work for the State Department, and you've done work on foreign policy in the U.S. Senate, probably other places I don't even know. Um, you know, this is what we talk about when, when we were warning all the, these people that seemingly smart, otherwise smart people Right. were Republicans who were like, oh, how much damage could he do? And we yeah. were like, 
do you guys understand the intricacy of foreign policy that, that misperceived yeah. communications by Twitter, by yeah. letter, by you know whatever, by, yeah. by getting up in front of a, a fucking camera can lead to war? Yeah. I mean, that is the thing about speaking about things you don't know anything about and saying stupid shit that pops into your right. head. It seems, again, this is Howard Dean characterizing a BBC <clears> report, <throat> but it right. seems that may have literally just had, people may have died because of Trump's right. third grade letter. Right. Okay. I'm sorry. Right. I hope you remember. No, what no, you no, no, that was good. But yeah. I felt that was incredibly important. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> I'm having my coffee allergy moment that I have every morning, so we'll live with that. Or it's actually probably the milk, but it's okay. Um, what what I wanted to sort of get into was this issue, and we certainly have it with Saudi Arabia, but we have it with Israel, and we also have it with the Turks, among others. Is And it's been going back probably since the founding of the country, I'm sure, but every country, not just U.S. This issue of should we ally ourselves with either bad governments or very, very imperfect governments, right? right. Every government's imperfect. Now, Turkey gets very interesting because, A, they're a NATO ally. I mean, that's a huge deal. That's a huge deal. So they're not just a strategically important ally that is that borders Russia. That, mind you, Russia would, uh, Russia currently has to go through, is it the Bosporus? I always forget how to, what it's called exactly, but those little straits right there between uh, uh, that Turkey controls right. for its fleet to get into the Mediterranean. Russia would like nothing better than to start building uh, uh, you know, uh, facilities uh, in Syria on the Mediterranean, right? So that that's that's an issue right there. So Turkey is strategically very important. Well, they also, have a let me give a little yep. more history to that. People forget this. Hmm. I mean, Turkey's historic is importance. And so, people, you know, Turkey's history is that it was one of the few states, majority Muslim states, that was secularized, right. um, done by Ataturk, a, a famous, you know, larger-than-life Turkish right. leader, what, around the 1920s, 30s? I was say about 100 years ago, yep. And, um, and so... The, the, it's important when, when we put this in context, to, you know, a couple things we mentioned. One, that's one of the reasons it was let into NATO. It's history as a secularized. We weren't as worried about radicals taking over. Second part of that, it's strategic importance. We did then and we do now have nuclear weapons there. We, of course, wouldn't admit yeah, this by out, the way, 50, out. Yeah, 50, apparently. Did you hear? Right. Uh, I, I do now because of Trump. Trump leaked would, yesterday how many nukes we have there, which is something no president ever did because it's considered highly classified. Right. Well, and so just the way, Tur just the way, it's never been confirmed in the press that Israel has nukes because they want there to be strategic ambiguity. We know they have nukes. Right. Okay. And this is the same thing with Turkey. There's nukes, nukes in Turkey, and that goes back to if people are, uh, you know, some of this st stuff goes back to even, you know, we made some deals during the the uh, um, Cuban, missile? Cuban missile crisis. You know, and I don't know how that because at that time to get them to pull their nukes from Cuba, we said if they if we would quietly take our nukes out of Turkey, and I thought we did. So I don't know at what point if Reagan put them back, we moved them back. Yeah, it's a good question. That, that yeah. seems like a, a reliable belief considering Reagan's stance yeah. towards Russia. But the the point being, um, there's a long history of of Turkey of Turkey playing a hugely strategic role right. in NATO. Right, and, and when Erdogan took over. The reason why this was so alarming to people is it was the end of a long reign of secular rulers and and a Islamic. I, I don't want you know I don't know what the term is we're using that I'm not allowed to use anymore. If it's Islamic radical, if it's Islamist, if it's but somebody who much more was a demagogue who based his election on growing anti-American, anti-Western, anti-Jewish, anti-Christian sentiment right. in the Middle East, and again. You can't talk about that without talking about the damage that George W. Bush's administration did in, right. in that region uh, that helped the rise of of much many more radicals in that right. region. Right. Right. Sorry, I just I think all that's really important as yeah, yeah, yeah. for this. But I mean, so the issue <clears throat> the issue becomes where is the dividing line between countries that are imperfect and countries that are so imperfect, so bad, do such bad things that we've got to cut off ties or, or re, you know, re, restrict ties, et cetera. My, um, <clears throat> the, the anecdote I was going to tell was an uncle of mine, uh, a very, actually a number of my family very involved in Greek politics, but he I didn't was, know that your family, by the way, we were such big shots. You tweeted something out the other day. You know that's what I was going to talk that. about. Yeah, in Greece, yes. Here we're just, you know, successful immigrants. But um, but in Greece, no, well, and then it goes back like a couple hundred years. That's because we didn't build a wall. 
We did not build a wall. We Greeks could have had a wall, and then we would have stopped Turkey. But uh, no, the um, my uncle under Papandreou, pa, uh, Papandreou, Andreas Papandreou, who was prime minister in Greece back in the 1980s, socialist, remember, uh, very uh, sort of confrontational with the U.S. Mind you, Greece just got out of a military dictatorship I ten years ago. That, that, that was post junta. Yeah, it was a junta that the U.S. supported. So ten years after the military dictatorship that the U.S. supported got overthrown, people might have been a little anti-American. I can understand that. Any case, my uncle uh, uh, Yanis Karalambopoulos is his name, but he was uh, prime minister. Uh, not prime minister. He was deputy prime minister under Papandreou. He was defense minister for a while. He was also UN ambassador. Right. And I think he was the fourth thing that I always forget. But defense minister and uh, U.N. ambassador were the two biggies I can recall, and especially defense. And I was visiting now probably seven, eight years ago uh, with my parents, him in Greece. And uh, really interesting because, I mean, I've always loved talking politics with him. And I mean, this guy at this point was probably already 92, 93, maybe, and was I mean, Cliff, he's talking to me and we're talking about politics. And I kid you not, this guy must be 92 or 93, right? And yep. he's sitting at his home and out of the blue, he says, you know, he's remembering stories about politics from the 80s when he was defense minister. And he goes, you know, there was this man in the Reagan administration, Richard Pearl. And I went, oh, my God. <laughs> I remember Pearl was Pearl was Pearl Pearls were the nasty. neocon. Uh, I mean, yeah. didn't Pearl write that neocon book with from. Uh, he may have Pearl. Remember, had like you a should, jet you ask, hair. You know, you should ask from I about, ask from about, about him. because I mean, my uncle is talking about Pearl, and I'm like, I know who he was. He was at DOD. He was crazy, but he's he's. I, I, it's too bad because he died a few years ago. Like, imagine the anecdotes these guys have. You know what I mean? Wait, wait, wait um, you're saying your uncle died a few years ago? Yeah, he died a couple years ago. So I was going to ask you, yeah. which I'm sorry about that, by the way. You want a podcast gonna, with him? <laughs> no, no, no. I was going to ask about like the only one of like the loud, 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 loud neocons during the bush administration that i have no idea where they are is pearl like we've heard nothing yeah. from him no all you're, the I, others either right. some became you know the boot and from became sort of it yeah. turned against first bush to a certain degree and then very much trump what are you looking at something wrong i'm, I'm googling richard pearl go but, on you know and then a number of the bolton obviously turned back up in a pretty big way and, he's alive and bill crystal is an anti-trump uh, uh, a never trumper i mean I'm not. I, I thought he was still alive, but yeah. like he's gone. No, he's 78. Uh, I'm not seeing because a couple of those neocons, like Dang. Bolton, jumped into bed with Trump. Unlike the other ones yeah. that became never Trumpers. Who's the cr really crazy one? Who? 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 Um, oh, what's his Frank name? Frank Gaffney. Yes, you knew <laughs> I was talking about. With that. I said the one oh, that yeah. went after the anti-tax yeah, yeah, yeah. guy and called him an Islamist. What's his name? The anti-tax... Yeah. Grover Norquist. Oh, he and Norquist yeah, got yeah. a huge fight because yeah. Norquist is married to a Palestinian. And he basically oh. called him like a, a, a member of the Muslim Brotherhood, which I thought was right. only reserved for Obama. Right. Yeah, Gaffney's a fucking loon and he's okay, jumped into bed with yeah. Trump. Yeah. He, he, yeah. Li like Bolton, although Bolton now, I guess, got too offended by him. Yeah. I, mean, yeah. I wonder what Gaffney thinks right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In any yeah. case, yeah. point being... Pearl's the only one of that group that yeah. I've heard nothing from. Like, he's just I, gone. I, he's alive, and there's nothing in his Wikipedia that talks about what he's doing now, which makes me wonder if he's healthy. Just, Who knows? He maybe may he's not healthy, or maybe just after just, Bush just, and that disaster in Iraq, he was like, I'm walking away. I don't he's know. Retired, he's retired and happy, maybe, too. Yeah. We've had a couple guests on here, including a certain friend of yours and a guy that people like to attack me for on Twitter, who I've already mentioned, uh, who may know. We should probably Trump. ask. <laughs> we should ask. We should ask my dinner date, David. From we should ask David about that. That would be interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but no. So what? So what I was talking to my uncle was about was uh, was about the issue of Turkey getting uh, admitted into the EU, which has been an ongoing, you know, discussion. And <clears throat> um, mind you, you know, they had a coup attempt a couple of years ago in Turkey, right? So there's still a lot of issues in Turkey. What we're seeing right now with the Kurds, you know, a lot of issues. And Erdogan, very much a strong man. So there's a lot of concerns about Turkey and whether they're, right. you know, democratic enough. Uh, and civil enough for the EU, right? And the same issue really applies to NATO. And we've never really discussed it because it's been really convenient having the Turks in NATO. Um, right. In talking to my uncle, and this is a very long conversation that actually I think I recorded, so I've got to like check these because I recorded all my conversations with him because I was like, for That's posterity, so I've got to have these, you know? Um, and uh, what he had said in a nutshell was, he said, we've got to get Turkey in the EU. 
And I was like, really? Because I wasn't sure. I'm like, as a hardline Greek, you know, defense minister, right? He said, no. And basically, I'm paraphrasing, but he was arguing that it's the only way to tame Turkey in the long run. Right, the well, only, And this was for Greece's interest, but also the world's interest. That's what these world organizations have been, right, the UN, NATO, CETO, the, the EU, you know, like they've all been about trying to bring people in and democratize yeah. and lead to human rights. The problem and, all the inter and all the interconnections basically calm you as a country, so to speak, right. because it kind of ties your hands in a good way. Well, yeah. it ties your hands in a good way, and it also stops the reason why Putin has been sort of, you know, his whole program has been to break up all these alliances, is it, it, it's a way of, of creating a bulwark against somebody going and, and, and invading in the manner in which right. despots did during World War II. Right. The, the problem here is, um, and I don't know if the Americans are in the best place to, to make this argument now because Donald Trump is our president, <laughs> but... You know, at least Trump, I still think our institutions and all that ends up leaving eventually, <laughs> hopefully in chains. But the question is, when you've got countries like like Turkey, where we, in fact, have nuclear weapons right. or Hungary, where we don't. But if but you've got in Orban, every bit the right. fascist or Poland. Right. When some of these countries head in that direction. I guess the question becomes. You know, unlike the financial agreements, unlike the EU, unlike the UN, unlike you know, which is not financial, but is not doesn't bind anybody to go to war. Right. NATO binds us to go to war for these guys. Right. I mean, so what? I mean, I would ask that question right now. Yeah. What if somebody who's current member, the rest of NATO, agreed to come to our defense after 9/11, and we stupidly, another stupid mistake by the Bush administration, said no, we're going to go it alone, right. which is what the right wingers wanted, and it was a terrible mistake. Right. Um. Well, what if a Kurdish terrorist of some sort, pissed about what they're doing, right. were to go and, uh, and, and to take some sort of a weaponry and blow up, you right. know? 9 11 uh, style. 9 11 style in Ankara. Yeah. Yeah. What happened? Then do we have to then go to right. war and attack the Kurds? I mean, these right. are realistic questions when you've got that Article 5, you know, it's Article 5, I believe it is, right? I think so. Is the of, joint of, defense. Of the, of the NATO yeah. agreement, which means, yeah. you know, what if Hungary decides. You know, they're hungry. Sorry, that was terrible. Right. For a little bit more land, and they feel like invading one of their neighbors. What right. do we do? Right. You know, I mean, these are real. I mean, right. that's that's my problem. Implied is, I is that you're dealing with reasonable people who will make Correct. reasonable, not just reasonable judgments, but reasonable judgments in line with your own philosophy. With so your, we know your values, France, constitutional governments. Right. Right. France will hopefully not get into any wars that we wouldn't support. Uh, you know, uh, England as well. Well, one hopes, right? I mean, you know, we got into wars that they didn't like, obviously. Well, so. I was going to say, though, but frankly, if you think about it, what if, you know, you, you could add Vietnam into that with us, and you certainly could add the Iraq War. Vietnam, although, again, although, was although an NATO's earlier era. When, go ahead. NATO's about getting attacked. It doesn't mean if I declare war, you all have to join me. No, you're, you're correct right? about it's that. But I'm thinking more in the, it, it, during the Vietnam era, when the world was not as connected as it, as it is now, right. acts of terrorism were much harder to, to, to pull off in, in foreign continents. Right. In the era of Iraq, when we, when we went it alone and, and got involved in a war of aggression, in an illegal war under George W. Bush, what if some other country that what we didn't invade decided you know, they were going to come after us because of that right. and attacked us? I mean, would NATO have had to have defended us? Right. Right. right? An, an ally of, of Iraq, let's say. Right. I mean, it's, a, it's messy territory. And I mean, again, and but I'm and offering answers because I don't know if I right. have any, uh, you but know. And in, in Turkey's case, you've got the problem of Russia. Of we don't really want Turkey going into Russia's arms, and Turkey's been playing a cute little game. They've been buying right. some weapons from Russia. Um, you know, it's it's, and they're strategically located, and they have historic animosities. Certainly, you know, as a Greek man, uh, they have historic right. animosities with Greece, as you know, with the Kurds. With yep. certainly they've changed now, but certain of the more Islamic states, they do. So I mean. You know, they're letting them go into somebody else's hands. Right. I mean, they're, they're in a strategic position where they're located too. And we don't want to, and you know what? And we don't want to push them into becoming a religious Muslim state. That's correct. So, so there's a lot. This, this is why, in general, when people want to discuss Israel policy or even Saudi Arabia, I think they ignore the strategic because they feel like the strategic is immoral. And I think the strategic can conflict with the moral argument. But you cannot ignore, for example, you know, it drove me nuts when people would say Iraq was, you know, Iraq was about oil. Right. Of course it was fucking about oil. Why the fuck do you think we, it was about oil in Israel? Of course it was. Well, oil, <laughs> Israel, know. other other Middle Eastern concerns. You know, and you know what I mean? It doesn't but make I mean, it right. 
But, but it also know, doesn't make it wrong, is I mean, my no, point. No, 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 that I'm just saying, <laughs> but, but also, like, you know, there was the, their, their theory of blossoming democracy, which I think they believed in. I don't understand how, yeah. you know. Um, and, but and, that's not my point. I guess my, my point is like on the oil thing is it is not wrong to say we've got strategic interests in this country and we've got to be careful how things play out because of those strategic interests. Even if morality can sometimes conflict with that. No, no, of course. The oil thing always drove me nuts because it was like, you better fucking be worried about what, what happens to the oil supply. That does not mean we go well, in. It doesn't mean you get to bomb them and take the oil supply. That, that's which I know you're not saying. But I'm just trying to. Argument. Correct. Right. Right, right. I'm trying to make it clear, which is oil is a strategic concern. Yeah. Absolutely. And keeping it's it not well, a concern that gives us the right to invade any country or we're no better than anybody else. No, but, which, by but, the way, is what Trump thinks we're no better than anybody else. I happen to think we're better than most yeah. to all. As yeah. bad as we are at times and as many terrible things as we've done, we get everybody it right. Else has done, the point is everybody else – we can get into that whole discussion too. Everybody else has done stuff too. Any oppressed group who has had a nation or a state, so to speak, yep. um, you know – I'd like. I'd be curious what their foreign policy was, that they were always good to their neighbors. They never you know, had. They never had human sacrifices. <laughs> I mean, I hate to say this, you know, yeah. and I'm just going to say it. Um, and and uh, at least half the population will agree with me. White men aren't the problem. Men are. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm um, sorry. Every one of these countries, yeah. Idi Amin wasn't a white man. Yeah, he was a bad motherfucker. Erdogan isn't a white man oh, either. Pot. One could argue. I'm sorry. Erdogan isn't quite a white man either. Right. Pol Pot wasn't a white man. Yeah. Murdered people just the same. The Chinese leaders right now, the one thing they do all have in common for the most part, though, is they're mostly men. Uh, and now, that, mind, you, mind you, though, the, the one point I will raise there, because people bring up that point, is because of the oppression of men, uh, not the oppression of men, because of the oppression caused by men, we have not had a lot of female leaders to test the theory. No, you, that's correct. Right? And maybe I mean, some of them, Mark, Margaret... I'd argue that Margaret Thatcher wasn't really the best leader. I, I'm not on the level of, of, of autocrats, but I guess, yeah, you, no, 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 you're correct about that. I like Tinker Patrick, but I mean, you know. Yes. Right. I'm just saying overall, me, you know, when people try to make it like white males and persecuting, yeah, we've done a ton of that. I'm not denying it. Absolute but, power. Come on, folks. Yeah. You know, Genghis Khan wasn't a white guy. And at this point, I think there's a, I don't know what it is, do you Human know what the sacrifice. percentage is? No, no, yeah, that too. But do you know what the percentage is? There's something like one percent of people alive in the world can trace some DNA to Genghis Khan because of the amount of rape. He got around. Was, Literally. Well, oh, I didn't know that. He really did. Wow. Oh, there are thousands upon thousands of women in a world oh, wow. that had how many millions of people back? I don't know. I have to look. I, I, I was wondering why you were bringing I didn't even know that. Wow. Yes. Well, I'm just saying what he did was terrible. He took over vast tracts of land and, and ra I'm sorry to use that word because I know that upsets well, no, some people, but did. I don't know what else to say it. He raped a, a lot of women yeah. uh, or forcibly married them. We call it what you know, what you will. Yeah. The point is, is that like, again, uh, we, we need to be honest about these things that, that these countries have done terrible things. You know, the, 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 in Rwanda, the, you right. know, the Hutus weren't white. <laughs> Well, you know, okay, you know what? Just <clears throat> what I think is interesting about your point is, is you're not, our, and this is something that I think is important because it's a point we sort of keep bringing up, and it also annoys me with some of the thinking today. Um, you are not saying it's okay that America did X, Y, and Z because oh. Genghis Khan, blah blah blah. What you're saying is the analysis and the conclusion you should take from America did X, Y, and Z, whether it was slavery, whether it was Vietnam, whether it was Iraq under Bush, is not America is a bad country, right? And, and, and actually what I think, I think a lot of the argument that annoys me is because I get a sense that people try to argue that we are a uniquely bad country. That's what I'm saying that pisses law. me off. And that pisses Look, me off. Again, again, yeah. you know, you want to test like my bona fides on this stuff? I mean, you know, I would say to people on the left, I mean, Andrew Jackson committed genocide against the Cherokee. Genocide. He should have never been on a damn... I don't care how good he was economically for the common man. That means the common white man. You know what? He did a lot of... He did good, some good things economically for common... It doesn't, it doesn't matter. When you commit genocide against a, a race of people, when you're a racist in a manner in which he was, never should have been on any bill, and the faster we can get him off every single bill or anything else his picture is on, yeah. the better. There's a reason why Trump and Bannon yeah. love Andrew Jackson. I'm yeah. giving you an example. I don't, call, I don't sort of try to color what happened in the United States with shades of gray. That was genocide. What we did to Native Americans overall was genocide. What we did right. to African Americans was horrible. What we did to the Japanese during World War II, that was done by FDR, by the way, okay? 
I can go on and on and well, on. The, the FDR, but the FDR thing really does put you in an interesting situation because nobody would say FDR was a horrible man and should never be, you know, talked about anything good he did because, right? right? But I still look at everything within the context of its times. And yes. within the context of its times, that very racist thing that FDR did was not, was not on the, the extreme end of racism, as bad as it was. Right. The extreme end at that point was, we're going to march you into a camp and murder you. Not right. we're go you're, we're going to relocate you because we don't we're trust gonna, you. Or we're going to lynch you. Right. Still, in the forties. Right. Yeah. So what I'm saying is, is that everything has to be looked. And so the United States has done terrible things. Foreign policy, the the places we meddled in, the fifties and the sixties, right. horrible. You know, I'm not making excuses for anything. I'm just saying the that nobody had close to a post enlightenment vision that the founding fathers had, who still, by the way, many of whom had slaves in the right. you know in, in the eighteenth you know in the eighteenth century. No, I mean, what we did, the, the aspirations we've tried to reach, the ways we've moved forward, the only country still that's elected, a, you know, a minority man, a man who is a minority in that country uh, with their entire, that's us, with Barack right. Obama. So I'm just, I'm trying to say that, that right. overall, the things we stand for, at least in theory, and the things that we sometimes live up to are far better than almost yeah. any other country can come. Yeah. That's all yeah. I'm saying. Yep. And it doesn't excuse us. It's just so back to I'm sorry. I didn't mean to get yep. off on that. Channel, I know. How but, do we get off on this from Turkey? Um, well, you know what, actually? But you did say one thing that made me think back to Turkey. Was, because you brought, I, I'll say what it is. You brought up huh. Turkey's strategic interest and we brought up right. that oil is a strategic interest. And right. I'm sorry. Sometimes we still have strategic interests like that. It doesn't Correct. mean we get to invade, bomb, kill. What, what we did yeah. in Iraq was criminal. But we, we should be able to say out loud yeah. that resources are a strategic yeah. interest of ours. Well, and what you got me thinking was, and then you have to balance the strategic argument versus the, uh, maybe the genocide argument, I guess, which is, which is, and again, this is the problem with Turkey. It's also the problem with Saudi Arabia. Saudi when, Arabia, it's a big part of the problem, you know, yes. Israel too. When does the country go so far that you've got to say, enough, I can't be your ally anymore? I think... Saudi Arabia. Well, the problem with Saudi Arabia is they've got so much fucking power because of the oil that it gets risky. I think the Saudis are really nasty people. The 9-11 thing. I was going to say 9-11 bothered me. 9-11 didn't bother me. What bothered me was the Saudi Roland. 19, Osama bin Laden, MBS. I mean, the corruption is that's, endemic. 9-11 that, that, still gets in my craw of what Saudi's role, Saudi Arabia's role was and how we downplay. And Saudi Arabia yeah. funding the, the madrasas across that's the Middle East. They still export all that crap everywhere, too. The revolution. It's, that is really fucked up. And Turkey is bordering on it. Repeatedly, right. but certainly well, with this right. attack. So, so there's, I think there's some, some, there are some leaders, and there have been some ones who've stood up and had integrity um, in Saudi Arabia, <laughs> and of course, MBS had most of them jailed and thrown away. Different levels, again, within context. I'm not saying perfect or whatever, right. but I, I certainly believe that that even with the strategic interest we have there, we should have been demanding reforms much sooner than we have been. You know what's funny too? I'm liking this video because you know what it's letting us do? It's letting us go like this to each other and we're able to- I know! You know I'm serious, like even seeing you start to talk, it makes it easier. I've had a loud mouth my entire life, but you know? now I see you talking sometimes and I can actually shut up because I know you're talking. But it's interesting. I mean, it's because this, see, this is the way I like to talk. It's funny, I've told Cliff for years now, like I wish the podcast was more of a back and forth because that's how I do phone calls and personal conversations. And we tend to do more monologues because when we tape it online, it's hard to hear each other. It almost it right. almost gets like the um the old phone calls with Europe when when it would just sort of cut each other off. Oh, this, this is it's like a Saturday live skit. You don't talk for a second because you're waiting for the other one, and then you both yeah. talk over each other. Then you wait a second, yeah. and you talk but over you know, each other. But this is also Skype because Skype. I'm noticing. We'll get off the esoteric in a second, but I'm noticing when you're talking, you start to talk. I can hear you, and I can hear me. So it's letting us talk over each other more naturally. Right. Because it's literally when we'd cut each other off, it was literally I would lose three, four words, and then it'd be like, I, I, I. anyway, it's very interesting. So, I like. This. Okay. I feel like anyway, we, back to we this. covered yeah. all of this. Yeah. The key thing that I would say to end this segment yeah. is that, as John brought up, three, you know, whatever is three hundred fifty or whatever voted against Trump and rebuked him for this. Yeah. Um, some have gone further. Connell, by the way, said he wants it even stronger in the Senate. The resolution, which is Mr. interesting. Connell actually stood up. Um, and I was shocked by this. He, it, he almost grew a real chin while he was talking. He was yeah. so direct. Sorry. And he stood up and he said, I hope, and again, not that I believe this at all, whatever, but the fact that he even said this, right. I hope the vice president and the secretary of state can bail us out of this situation. Hmm. How yeah. direct a rebuke of Trump yeah. is that? McConnell um, doesn't 
that, yeah. Now, Adam Kinzinger, who's from John's home state yeah. of, of uh, Illinois, and still, if I remember correctly, doesn't believe in climate change because he thought it was God, uh, you know, oh. God's giving us extra water. I mean, this Has is not... That? God, That's I believe too bad. Kinzinger, or maybe I'm forgetting. Maybe it's one of the uh, other nuts. Yeah. He's certainly not somebody that I look up to. He's as conservative He's as conservative. conservative. Yep. He's jumped off the bandwagon before. I'm going to read you right now. He's been uh, critical of Trump on a lot of the stuff that we don't like. He's critical, which is good. Oh, what did he say? Well, maybe it was Shimkus, because he's a nut, oh. too. He's the religious one. But Adam Kingsinger, this is what he said most recently. How, you know, so here's a tweet from 22 hours ago, and then I'll get up to the, 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 right. the coup de grace. <laughs> How is con reconstituting ISIS, abandoning the Kurds, and greenlining a slaughter by the Turks our concern? Questions Reagan would ask. Okay, well, I'm not sure. But in any case, um, hmm. the PKK, and those are, this is the Kurds, is probably worse at terror than ISIS. Things Reagan wouldn't say, but real Donald Trump did. So the, my point being, whether I agree with Kingsinger or not on the Reagan hagiography, right. he's, he's attacking Trump. And here, here's the key one. Hmm. This is from 14 hours ago. Wow, we bombed our own base on purpose because of the impulsive decision by Ron, real Donald Trump. He tagged him, too. Right. Didn't leave time to evacuate the right way. Is this the America you grew up believing in? Question mark. That's wow. and as you said, all everybody else who's criticized Trump has not mentioned Trump's name, A, and B, on Twitter when they do it, they not only don't mention Trump, they don't tag him, meaning uh, it's something he would see because you're literally sending a message to him when you tag him. It's right. almost like sending an email or something. It's hard to explain if you don't use you're Twitter. Directing the tweet to make sure the person sees, sees it. it. And what most have done, most of the Republicans have done this weird uh, passive voice thing of, you know, this is a really bad policy without, and everyone keeps going, okay, A, yep. who created the policy? And B, who put the guy in power and kept him in power Right. You. <laughs> they act like it's an act of God, this policy. Yeah. Came out Some of nowhere. Policy. There's yeah. nothing they could have done about it. Exactly. Um, right. So, and know. we don't know who did it. Right. Yeah. So so that was, I thought that was incredible. Um, why, do think, you know. why do you think this is happening? Why is, I think we may have brought this up before, but others have. Why is this attack on the Kurds of all things finally galvanizing Republicans to speak out and treason didn't? That's and, a hell of a question. So, um. We, I, I guess we have to analyze that in, in ways beyond, you know, are there members of their base that they, are they worried that they'll lose electorally from it? Are they worried that, Pat well. Pat Robertson freaked out, but I don't know why he cared. But Pat Robertson freaked out. Oh, Pat well, Robertson, but I don't know why he cared. Oh, well, I know one reason why. Okay, this is a good point. You mm -hmm. actually helped remind me with Pat Robertson. Mm -hmm. A number of, of Kurds are actually Christian. They're not all Muslim. Okay. There's a whole huge group of Christians. So we abandon Christians to be slaughtered by Muslims. By Muslims, right. That doesn't make evangelicals very happy. And guess who's the biggest base for Republicans right now? Could right. that be? Maybe that's it. Maybe. Yeah, maybe that's it. You no, know? it's 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 interesting, but it's strange because they've been very outspoken. Like now, Kinzinger has been outspoken generally, so I don't count that as 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 my his is not an errant or an aberrant uh, right. tweet. But but for the other ones, and even McConnell, McConnell, that's weird. Um, Lindsey Graham, Lindsey Graham's tweet or, or comment yesterday. Lindsey Graham said right. there will be American blood on Trump's hands if he doesn't change his policy. That I was like, holy shit! I mean, that Please. was. That was obnoxious in a good way, but that was no, it was, and 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 you know. so in the past, I've seen. Um, I'm trying to find this tweet now. You know, John Brennan, former CIA director, um, has criticized the the hell out of out of Trump, but he's made sure to you know never make it about the Republican Party, right? I mean, right. Brennan's I'm sure a former Republican probably. Um, he's never made it about the Republican Party. He's just said generically, Republicans need to stand up and be patriots. Republicans, you know, blah blah blah. Here's John Brennan from yesterday. Mitch, Lindsay, Marco, and other R's. So now he's naming three of them, and right. he's specifically saying Republican Party. You own at real Donald Trump's disastrous decision to abandon the Kurds and America's global responsibilities. By putting your crass politics above country, you've encouraged his incompetence, corruption, and evil ways. Find your souls. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's not Brennan's normal critique of where right. he goes after Trump in that language but leaves out the Republicans, right. you know, and, and whatever. He's naming them here. Again, maybe it's the chorus, part of it's the chorus of, of increased attacks on them from people that weren't attacking them before. I don't know. It's right. interesting. Maybe it's that they're seeing the numbers move, the impeachment numbers, which have been moving steadily to the point where a majority of people now favor impeachment. I think the impeachment stuff is going to have them worried because even though they're, as we talked about before, 
Republicans are worried about losing their primary, and to win their primary, they need the crazies. But to win the general, especially senators, they need the middle. And that's, that, right. that's where the impeachment swing comes from, because the impeachment swing is happening in the middle of people right. moving towards impeachment. So if you're a Republican, you're now caught between the Scylla and Charybdis. Google Very it. That's nice. great. Um, oh, you know, between, from, between from a, Odysseus, you should all Odysseus, read it. Yep. Uh, uh, between a rock and a hard place of, I've got to win my primary, I need the crazies, but I've got to win the general, and the middle is pissed at me, or pissed at Trump. And that start, that gets interesting. But it, Now, now yeah. this may also, I thought of this, this morning I was reading Political Wire, and it, it was from a major newspaper, and I can't, you know, I can try to go to it right now, just so I'm being accurate and giving credit to who deserves it but reported the fact that the five most vulnerable Republican senators have all seen their numbers crash. Recently or what? As in like the last month. Ooh. I mean, it's been going on longer than that. Right. Um, but. Huh. Let's see. What's the, I wonder what the details are. Is, is it a overall Trump thing? Which, which is what, that's what they, feel, that's what they were saying. It's awfully suspicious if it's all five. That's what meaning, means. meaning it should be an externality that's affecting it if it's all it's fine. It's a morning consult, so that's NBC, oh, that's right? Yep. Quote, the most vulnerable Republican senators are not improving their standing in their home states. Um, while the uh, field of Democratic challengers takes sh take shape, Republicans representing Colorado, Arizona, North Carolina, Maine, and Iowa, also their net approval, the share of voters who approve of the senator's job performance minus the share who disapprove, declined between the second and third quarters of 2019, and a couple of them saw it huh. go way down. Susan Collins went a net negative eight points down. Huh. And it's not like she did anything new evil. Not, not even I guess the Kavanaugh thing came back up. I guess the Kavanaugh yeah. thing came back up, which is never a good thing yeah. for Susan Collins when it's out yeah. there. But still, uh, they looked at Cornyn, too. Cornyn has not improved his standing. His numbers have stayed the same. He's the only one. But Ernst, I think Ernst had a big drop in Iowa. Now, that could huh. also be related to farms going out of business. But again, that's related right. to Trump's trade war if it's not related right. to this impeachment stuff. North Carolina, Tillis' numbers are way down. And McSally and, and, and Gardner in Arizona and Colorado were already in a lot of trouble. Right. So, you know, again, their numbers are going down. Impeachment numbers are going up. Evangelicals are getting pissed about, about the fact that they've ditched. And foreign policy Republicans, neocons, are pissed about them leaving the Kurds. To, so they've pissed right. off two groups. You know, all of that maybe, you know, is, is what's scaring them. Interesting. That's interesting, which kind of means that McConnell may want impeachment to be over with fast as well. That, that would be interesting. Ironically, and, well, that, and the point there is that, you know, Pelosi allegedly wants impeachment to be done quickly. They want to get it done by Thanksgiving if they can, because they don't want it hanging out there leading up to the election and the right. electorate feeling like Democrats are focusing on impeachment and not the issues that matter to Americans, blah, blah, blah. But as we've seen, impeachment is moving the polls, A, against Trump towards impeachment, but B, it, if it's affecting Republican re-election as well, then you're going to have Republicans being in the same boat where we don't freaking want to have to talk about I could imagine Republicans right. in the want Senate. to get it over with as soon as possible and try to, like, and think they can attach themselves to yeah. Pence. Right. Jim know? Jordan's liking it, but all the other Republicans are going, I don't freaking need this. Well, we yeah, need Jordan is, is already, because he's of how he's publicly spoken, he's tied his feet to Trump, as have a couple yeah. of the other ones. I, I mean, I don't see how, how Jordan Meadows, some of these guys, yeah. escape. You Is know. there ever a chance to take down Jordan? I mean, uh, in the election, not with crime, not with the police. Oh, well, <laughs> a yeah, good, a good certainly, certainly for allowing kids to be molested at Ohio yeah. State and not do anything. Um, but I mean, it's, uh, it's uh, a very say. difficult district. Uh, it's not impossible. But Is it a very, gerrymandered district or just a tough oh, district? Oh, yeah. No, it's very gerrymandered. Okay. Okay. It's not the worst of those. You know, there's about three or four districts that are just ludicrous right. in Ohio. His is, I would call that not ludicrous, but very tough. Um, but I'd have to look back after the scandal came out about the Ohio State stuff and the other stuff. I can't remember her name, but the challenger ran against him last time. Definitely ran a lot closer to him. It wasn't close. I mean, yeah. still, I think at well, least. Was she a school might, teacher or something? or a, Something like that. But it might have been single yeah. digits. It may yeah. have been. I'd have to look it up, which again. Yeah. That's unusual. Even if it was eight or nine points, like that yeah. wasn't what it used to be. So, okay. so who knows? Okay. But okay. It's, it'd be tough to take him out unless we, we can take control of things and, and, yep. and redistrict better. In any yeah. case. Um, in any case, keeping him in the minority, you're still powerless when you're in the minority in the House. So, so that's, I think, I oh. mean, look, I don't have anything else on this. No, except that, you know. Oh, you know, yeah, but, that, well, I'll say the last thing. It was report, uh, the reporting too, this morning. Go ahead. I say Elijah Cummings, too. I want you to say a little oh, bit about him. Oh, oh, I do. I mean, I don't have anything else to say on this yeah. issue. 
I, I don't, but I remembered that the reporting this morning was saying that Trump's staff, I saw this report in numerous spots, as by the way, I've now seen the BBC claim about Erdogan invading in response to the letter. It's not just Howard Dean, who's now I've seen numerous reporters saying that. So, okay. uh, but when it comes to the staff, apparently Trump had said further enough back that he wanted to get out of defending the Kurds, wanted to get out of, out of the area there, uh, get, get our bases out and all that. And, um, uh, and his staff actually worked up plans to do it for to do it the best possible. They said it had to be at least three to six months, but right. they even drew up a plan for him to do it in one month, which wasn't the preference. What, he just boom, he, and he trashed all of that and just did it right. right away, which is why the chaos, the the the, yep. the Russians showing up mm -hmm. at our bases where we've had to bomb them. Yep. I mean, again, if that doesn't show up in well, campaign and, commercials yep. against every Republican running for yep. office, that their leader. That our taxpayer-funded bases, we ditched our allies and the stuff that we spent your money on, we had to bomb oh. and blow up because of Trump's decision. Oh, I was going to make a point about Russia and say we shouldn't forget the fact that all of this benefits Russia. And considering we're talking about Trump, keep that in mind as far as a motivation. Nope. Did you hear what Pelosi said yesterday? No. One no. of the things, oh Maybe. my God, this oh, was the yeah. one where I went, oh my God, you, you little witch, you. <laughs> she, in the middle of the meeting with Trump, she mentioned how this was benefiting Russia, and she said, why, Mr. President, with you, do all roads always lead back to Russia? Wow. She, she oh my God. Said, and she might have even said Putin. But she said, all roads lead back to Putin. And I mean, I read that, and I went, oh, fuck. You can I can imagine the generals guffawing at that point, going, Pfft. I know. I wonder, oh, I wonder yeah. if that's when he lost oh, his freaking mind. And started that, actually, that, she, remember she did it to him, too, during the, uh, the one where they got pissed with, with uh, government shutdown, I think. Yeah, when there have been three meetings. There. Yeah, yep. and every time she's gone and gotten the better of him because she knows how to get under his skin because it's so easy. Yep, and Schumer, I remember Schumer was being kind of nasty and she did, I forgot what she said. She what said she say? something. Remember that? She pissed him off. And we were laughing once again because there was video of her saying it. And she pissed him off. I don't remember now. He was trying to diss her saying, well, you know, Remember, you've got to be careful because you haven't won yet. You know, the speakership. Well, I can, even, I can but, even remember in my mind, like, where she was sitting. Yeah. You know, right in there, in the sofas there. I just can't remember yeah. what she said. Oh, We'd God. have to look that up. But it was zing, and I remember we were all like, holy shit, she's good. You yeah. know, but she, um, yeah, so she said that, why with you do all roads lead back to Putin? Oh, that's so good. <laughs> oh, and I, you know, but the thing is, again, I would have said, Nancy, and with you, why do all roads lead back to Stalin? Oh. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, with the socialism thing, right? I at least throw it back at her, but I no, mean, no, he, he doesn't. Yeah. He's not smart. But he can't enough. think that quickly. Yeah, he's just saying. He'd be like you and you too. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, exactly. You, it, you, I, you, 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 I'm rubber and you're glue. Um, whatever. Like, I think we can. We were going to talk about Sondland, but we've gone on about this yeah, for a while. Or let's. Let, I think we can get back to Solon in, in our next one because he's he's going to testify in a couple in the next you know, couple days. More testimony today and tomorrow anyway, so we'll have lots of yeah updates. We'll know more about it. I mean, so sadly, uh, the, the last thing we have to talk about is Elijah yep. Cummings, who is you know a, a, a giant um, in in civil rights history, in you know uh, in his time in Congress. You know, he was a classic case, born in the South, family immigrated up north. He grew up in Baltimore. I, I have to look for more, but I, I remember seeing in the past, there's a famous case where when he was 11, he, 11, mind you. I mean, I just saw my older son turn 13, who I think is a terrific kid, and yet he's not doing, you know, nobody, I wouldn't do a hell as lucky if I was going to school, probably. Um, so what did he do at 11? He desegregated a local pool. Oh, <laughs> did he really? Yes. He, he, he integrated a local swimming pool. Right. While white kids were throwing bottles and rocks at him, wow! At eleven, right, right. Um, oh, actually, but know. tell people so he's a Maryland. Uh, he was a so Maryland. A, so he was in the Maryland House of Delegates. Yep. Uh, youngest. I'm going to read some of this because I don't yep. know all of it by heart. And, and became, what's a U.S. Congressman and chair of the House Oversight Committee, which is one of the impeachment committees. He's led. He's yep. led the fight against Trump and and had some of the greatest speeches in terms of how we need to hold Trump accountable. At one point, he was the youngest chairman of the Legislative Black Caucus. Uh, first African-American to serve as speaker pro tem. Um, so it was 1996 is when he won his House seat. Um, and ranking Democrat, then chairman of what became the House Oversight Reform Committee. Um, 
Let's see what else. Uh, you know what's, actually, you know what's interesting? I'm looking at this, too. In remarks at the 2016 Democratic National Convention, Cummings said, our party does not just believe but understands that black lives matter. But we also recognize that our community and our law enforcement work best when they work together. That's a rather interesting coming together kind of quote, which is really yep. interesting. And do you remember when there was yeah. a police killing of Freddie Gray in Baltimore? Yes. He went out in the streets and as looting and sort of fighting was started, went out with a bullhorn and, and is given credit with helping quell what could have turned into a much larger right. uh, riot and unrest. Right. Um, you know, I mean, it's sort of hard to, you know, he's been, I mean, he's just been a spokesperson for civil rights his entire life. Right. Uh, been a spokesperson for everything mm -hmm. that was right in the House, rose to up to the position. And, you know, he had earlier, I don't remember what the issue was. He had earlier health mm -hmm. issues. And he... Oh, I just read he had an aortic valve replaced and then got an infection from it, which could be one of those scary little heart valve infections that you get. My dad had that for a while. And I had an uncle or a cousin who almost died. People people will get dental surgery and then they'll get like these heart infections from the dental surgery. Really creepy stuff. But he got an infection afterwards that may have then settled in his knee. Really weird stuff. Um, it's just a shame. So, he was only I mean, again, yeah. I'm not saying it's 68. Not, it's not that not that old. No, it's it's not thirty, but at the same time, yeah. it's not the, not what you what you expect and what you would have hoped for somebody yeah. like him. Only the good yeah. die young, as Billy Joel said. Um, yeah. But terrific, um, I mean, you know, I, I can't. He's just. It's one of those times when somebody passes that you can't say enough good things. You know, he, yeah. he, he we're lucky that we we had him there. So I'm just. I just gotta. Somebody just Mike Farley, one of our listeners, just posted a comment on Patreon about our 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 last podcast. Yeah, I agree. You guys have a great chemistry and a lot of energy. Oh, that's sweet. That's nice, man. We've got chemistry. Yay. <laughs> maybe we'll have, maybe we'll have even more now that we can see each other. We're like the Brady Bunch. We fucking hate each other off podcast. That's right. <laughs> Whenever we're not on here, like I tell John to go. First we had this. sex, then we hate each other. Just the Brady Bunch. <laughs> that, that's not true. Just kidding, that's Mrs. No. Schechter. Mr. Brady was gay. <laughs> that's true. Actually, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was an asshole too. Apparently, like a, he was. Um, cause, well, I was reading. I was reading. Um, on Google of all things, Cliff, they had the uh, what's Sherwin Schwartz or whatever his name was. Remember one of the big producers back there, directors. But he, the one that was in charge of the Brady Bunch, wrote this little autobiography about the Brady Bunch, and Google had. Uh, a free portion up that I read, and it was actually really like it. I haven't bought it, but I'm tempted to buy it because it was really interesting. And apparently, uh, what's his face, the father, was yeah. working for the. St this is mind you, the late '60s, right? So he was working for the studios, and back then, when the studio wanted you to work on something, you worked on it because you worked for the. You were on con right. under contract with the studio, so they you owned your ass. Yes. They owned, so you weren't necessarily paid per job. You were paid sort of on a retainer. And they decided he was going to work on this fucking thing called the Brady Bunch. And he was livid because it was so beneath him, That's which hilarious. is really interesting. In addition to being gayer than a, you know, gay bird. Um, and Florence Henderson, apparently at the time said John that, said that uh, not me. Exactly. But she knew he was gay. She, she has a great quote from Florence Henderson at the time saying she knew he was gay because she said something to the effect of, Oh, come on. I had to kiss the guy. No straight man kisses like that. <laughs> kisses a woman like that. It was very funny, but, um, but he was kind of an asshole, and like all the kids too had. There was well, a they all hooked up with each other, and like I mean, it's, you know. But imagine too, like, what do you do when you got to work with somebody for that many years? I think of Game of Thrones actually, because I think of I forgot. Were you a Game of Thrones person? I not no, but because like the two lead by the end, the two quasi leads, because there were a lot of leads in a way. But um, you know, Daenerys, who's this sort of queen of the dragons or whatever, and Jon Snow, who's like the king of the good guys in a sense. Yeah are the two kind of hooking up the great power couple, and there was zero chemistry between them, I think. And it always made me wonder whether they even got along. Well, the, you read was, after some of those things, it's, it's fun reading, like, you know, after Dirty Dancing, that, like, Patrick Swayze and Jennifer Grey hated each other. You know the, what I mean? I remember no. being like, wow, they pulled it off really well on camera because they, they, they made it seem like they liked each other a lot. Sarah Michelle Gellar, Buffy. Yeah. That, they didn't, she, she was not nice to work with, apparently. And yeah. the same kind of problem, right? So it's it's interesting the dynamic of how do you get a chemistry or how do you fake a chemistry if you can't? Maybe you can't fake it. No, my, my whole point is if, if you know. you're a, an actor, I think you can. I think that I can't, which is a problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's also yeah. a reason why I didn't do very well in political offices when I worked for people I didn't respect. 
right. because I'm really bad at faking that. Yeah, uh, you know, I hey, can't pretend to, to respect good somebody. Job. Exactly. <laughs> I, can't re- I can't pretend to respect somebody when I don't respect them. And, and clearly, these people that kiss Trump's ass, who you know, I mean, I'm sorry, Laura Ingram, for all of, of what a she terrible person she is, you know, went to what? Dartmouth and University of Michigan yeah. Law School. And she and she clerked for the Supreme Court and she's sitting there reading that letter by Trump. Yeah. I'm sorry, there's simply no way she doesn't think he's a moron. But she but she's she's able in her own greasy, disgusting way to fake it and right. pretend that he's this great leader or whatever. Yeah, I can't do that. How about if, I, if I'd say somebody like, I've always said to people when people are like, you get mad at me, you know, I at times when I got angry at Bernie in the past, you know, I had some of those people coming at me like, you're just saying that because you're a corporatist, neoliberal, you know, like you're just you're pretending because you don't, you know, because it's in your interest. I'm like, you know, I wish I had the ability to pretend yeah, yeah. when things are in my interest. I probably had a tougher time with jobs in my life, yeah, yeah. clients, everything, because I can't. <laughs> what you see is mostly what you get. You know, uh, I think I think that's the thing. So it always amazes me when I see those actors yeah, yeah. because they can pull it off, man. They right, go on right. screen and you're like, oh, my God, they must really love well, each think other. Of, think think of don't. Donald Trump. OK, Donald Trump and his base. Yeah. I, I swear to God, I hope there's a tape somewhere someday about him talking about his base with all those fucking rednecks behind oh, him on the stands. He, he yes. hates them, he, oh my God, especially he's... the religious ones. He hates them. He loves one thing about them and one thing only. <laughs> They are going to be, if he doesn't they, they love person, him. which he'd better, yeah. well, that too, but also they're going to be the easiest marks. They are the easiest income source. <laughs> yeah. All the, I mean, if he leaves that office of the presidency of. and doesn't go, he'll create an alternative to Fox News, but he'll also yeah. be emailing them every day to buy sh- yeah. you know, all the Trump swag, all the yeah. garbage they can't afford. Buy your Trump pen for $427 yeah, 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 yeah. signed by President Trump. I mean, you know, like, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. that I mean, they're easy marks. They're Trump University yeah. types. That's why he likes yeah. them. Yeah. Oh, no, absolutely. I mean, he loves the uneducated. Isn't that what he said? Or the undereducated? What was the line? I, I, was, I love the uneducated. That's why he because, loves the uneducated. Because a sucker's born every minute. That's oh, correct. yeah. No, but he, but I mean, he, especially because he is such a, uh, uh, you know, mal élevé. What's the word in English? <laughs> I'm doing, I'm doing a Beto. Oh, Adios. Adios. <laughs> yeah, I know. What, I, did, you, yeah. did you see that on the debate the other night? In the middle no. of a like a long screed, Beto goes blah, 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 in English. English English is además, blah, 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 which in además. Spanish means it means furthermore. But That's he literally just threw in the span. And I mean, it was just, everyone just did kind he, of went, "Oh God!" Did he, did he do it on purpose? Well, I mean, I, you know, I don't know with him. I, I had I, friends I, who I, spoke I, I, it I wish he'd stop running for president and go back you know, to the go back to the state. I'm just saying, I've had friends who are fluent in multiple languages. You're one of them. I'm fluent, uh, you know. I, I, I don't I have a hard time saying I'm fluent in French anymore because it's been so long since I spoke it regularly, but I yeah. fully understand it, can speak it, can do whatever. And I think there was a time like when I was at that level of fluency when I lived in France where I would do that sometimes, you, where I would just in, mix in, yeah. I'd speak both. I'd but speak you were living French. in France. Right. That's the point. He's not, li- I, I don't want to get into debate. No, 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 I'm yeah. not. I guess I'm asking the question when he's back in El Paso, where there's a large Spanish speaking population, is he walking around and speaking Spanish so much that, that, that happens? I don't know. That's the, only, that's the only thing I don't know is, is uh, fair enough. What you would, or is it fake? I'm not saying, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm saying okay. that maybe, you know, it's fake, but maybe you're right. Because what I don't buy is that he's bilingual and stuff. There's no way. Um, I mean, I speak languages. I'm fluent, but bilingual is a bilingual is the category. What you're talking about where when you're in France and with other Amer- uh, Franco-American right. friends or, frankly, other foreigners, when the lingua franca is French and English, you do both. We do it in Greek, my, here at Greek Americans, right. where we'll throw in Greek words, although I do it less now because the older generation's going away. But but you would throw in... Uh, actually, I remember I my sister... Saying. My grandparents, it was Yiddish that they would throw in. Yeah, actually, my I'm remembering my sister really quick. We'll, we'll end with this, but I mean, <clears throat> telling me... My nephew now, who Ilya, who's probably like 35, just had a second baby. So, you know, but when he was like two years old or maybe three years old, two and a half, and Kathy's trying to teach him Greek. With, so they kept using Greek words. And I remember initially it worked, but then the kids just, it doesn't work. They stick with English, you know. But initially, I remember him saying to me once, our, our dog's name was Che of all things, Che Guevara, which was really funny. My brother, the conservative, didn't understand that Che Guevara was like, it was yeah. a cool image in a shirt, so why not? Now he would be happy, but back then it was a good name. But uh, my nephew turns to me and go, is Che Exo? 
is Che outside? Like exothermic means exo means right. out right. outside. Is Che exo? And I was like, oh, that was kind of cute. But um, but the other thing he did, Kathy wants because they would they would they would mix it a little more, and Kathy would say to him like, whenever she'd be scolding him, she said, "I'm telling you, you better do that, Suleo." And right. Suleo in Greek, su, which is always confusing with Spanish because it's the opposite of Spanish. Su is you in this case, and Leo is is uh, I'm saying, I'm speaking. So it means I'm telling you, but it means it like that, like Sue, right, right. like like Mister, you know, right? And she goes like, so I'm telling you something, Sue Leo, which means I'm telling you. And he goes, I'm not a Sue Leo, you're a Sue Leo, <laughs> which I well, loved. It was the funny. She was. She called me howling. <laughs> I don't but, know uh, if it, I'll. I'll just say and, quickly. I don't know if it was, uh, <laughs> you know, the influence of a Steven Spielberg, or I don't know if it's uh, the fact that Seinfeld became as big as it was. But there used to be those words, and they seemed to be at the, back then. They were kind of just strictly. Yiddish things that would fly out of one of my grandfather's mouths, but they're now all, a lot of them are used by everybody now. I, well, mean, I mean, you know, I mean, certainly if that guy's a schmuck. Well, that's no longer a hey, word, yeah, yeah. you know, but I mean, schwitzing, I don't know if you know, do you know what yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I figured you did know what it means because that's something that nobody said until now. It, right. It's it's become popular where for people who have no idea what Yiddish is will say I'm schwitzing, you yeah. know, like, like, you know, so it's funny. I, yeah, I think yeah. it's because of, the influence, I, I don't want to, you know, you get, uh, if I go too far with this, people will be like, you're saying Jews control the country? Um, you know, Jews control the media? And all that, I'm not I'm saying, but there have been some prominent Jews, you know, like Jerry Seinfeld and whatever that I think, may, and Woody Allen, oh my God, yeah. have mainstreamed a lot of what used to be in the domain of only Jewish families now, I think. Hmm. A lot of people know the word, so it's changed a little bit. It's interesting. So you're saying we're all going to start using the word ademas for furthermore? Ademas! Ademas! Well, perhaps. <laughs> it was fine. Just, but that's oh. oui, but that's no. You know what? It, whatever. Whatever. I won't get onto this. Because actually, one of my other pet peeves. Okay, I'm going to say it since what the hell. One of my other pet peeves is, like, I said my Greek uncle's name with the Greek pronunciation. Fair enough. But people who on... And you and I usually say, and again, I say this as a fluent Spanish speaker. Know, John, you know what I'm going to say. I'm trouble. I, I, on, I absolutely know what you're going to say. On TV, people who insist on saying Spanish names or Spanish words with a Spanish accent, but they don't do it for any with other everything thing. else. With everything else, so they wouldn't do it with Italian. They wouldn't do it right. with French. But Spanish, it's you know, Maria Gomez. I know. I know what you're saying. Reporting from Chicago, and it. It just, personally, it drives me a little nuts. As a language speaker, it drives me nuts. Something about it hits my, as the French would say, it hits my ears. I understand what you're saying. Yeah. I think there, there's um, that consistency. If you're pronouncing everything, that's one thing, you know, but if you're not. It sounds like Beto saying ademas. There's something forced about it. Again, it's a linguistic thing. I don't care. In I don't, case, it's like, here's what I care about. Simple, We've hit the 130 fun. mark. I, I think it's about time for us yep. to. Uh, We're actually at the 113 mark. Oh. Believe it or not. Yes. Yeah, so we're, we can end. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, guys, hope you like this. We're going to, by the way, the other thing is we're going to see how the quality is because after two years, we finally got skiffs, skiffs, I'm calling you skiff. Uh, Cliff's you called skiffs. me Kurt before. So, you know, Kurt. <laughs> can you call me Kurt at one point? Kurt, I did call you Kurt. I, I called you Kurt. Don't call me Kurt Schlichter or whatever that dick's name is. I don't know. Who is that? Kurt Schlichter or Schlichter or whatever that right winger on. Oh, you no. must know who he is. Okay, maybe, but I don't know. Yeah. Um, but we're going to see because the one thing I'm worried about is the video quality of Skype. The audio should be good, but the video we're going to find out if it's uh, if it's any good for putting on YouTube because we're going to try to do that. So, because um, I want to do more. I think it's, I think the video is fun, personally. And Frank, this is, you know what it reminds me of, Cliff, actually? Inside baseball here. The difference of doing a TV show by being beamed in remotely from another studio where you're just looking at a camera. Yep. Versus sitting at a round table with people and having a discussion, which I've always felt I've been so much better at TV when I'm sitting with somebody talking. Because this is interactive, and when you're when you're, I mean, I can't, what you can't explain to people well, but when you're beamed in remotely, like you're sitting in a room often by yourself. There's not even somebody manning the camera. It's automatic. You're just alone, and then you hear in your ear that it's time to talk, and it feels like you're so like disembodied. I almost feel like like yeah, maybe I should sit here and pick my nose or something, yeah. you know, and then like eight million people will see it. And I mean, you're, trying, kidding, you're trying to seriously. hear it, but without seeing the face, you're literally going, oh, fuck, I better, I hope I understand everything they're saying. Right. Because I'm, you're you trying extra hard exactly to listen. Right. And especially a couple of times when I've gone on like foreign language stations, where even if they're speaking in English, like a French yeah, station where they've got a strong accent and right. I'm just hearing it, yeah. you know, luckily French has been easier for me. Say, I, I know the, English. Well, I know the, exactly. I'm like, <laughs> we're going to build a wall. 
But no, I know the French accent. A couple of times when I went on like Japanese TV or something or an accent that I don't know as well, and they're speaking English but in a very heavy accent, if you don't, if you can't see a face, it's, so you can read body language and everything, it's, it can be disorienting, let's say. Yes. But I think my computer's about to die unless I plug it in. So this okay. seems like a good time right. to okay. like, reach the cord over here. See, folks, where everything's new with our new TV thing. I'll, yeah. I'll get an extension cord next time. Magic. All right. All right. Uh, Let's call it quits and hope to God this recording even got our audio good too. We're we're about to, this is an experiment, folks. Um, it's Thursday. Okay, it's Thursday, so we'll hit you back Monday or Tuesday, unless the right. earth blows up and then we'll be back earlier or not at all. Or, or I'll be, yeah. You know, we'll we'll all go to heaven or hell together, or exactly, or two, whatever. Okay, goodbye. Bye. Oops, stop recording. Stop recording. Stop.